Hello, everybody. There are tons and tons of ways to join Quilt As You Go blocks. Today, I'm going to demonstrate my favorite way using one inch strips. I'm going to demonstrate using six blocks of a new project, a new quilt along we're starting on May 27th. So stay tuned to the end of today's video to see all of the different blocks. There's 16 and uh, to get more details about that project coming up. So I'm going to try to make this really quick. This will be the first video and I'm going to put it in the playlist of this series. So when you start watching this series and you're wondering what's an easy way or a quick way to join these blocks together, you can come right here and follow along. So I'm going to put on the screen as we get started the things you might need to join these blocks and let's go. To get started, of course, we need our quilt blocks. This method works no matter what size quilt block you're working with. Uh, just cut your strips the same length as your blocks and one inch wide. So you'll need two strips in between each one of your blocks. Then you'll need two strips to join your rows together. So to get started, we're going to start with our very first quilt block and we have two strips. I'm going to call them sashing strips in this video. Let's place our first sashing strip pretty side, the right side facing the block and let's flip it over to the back side and add the second strip with the right side facing the block. Now you could bring this over to the sewing machine just like this, right? Or you could use some pins to keep these layers together if that's helpful for you. You could also use binding clips to keep these little sashing strips in place. Or you could uh, glue baste your sashing. And really, uh, when the blocks are small like this, they're easy to maneuver. But once you start building the size of your quilt, that's when the glue basting really comes in handy. So we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance from the top to the bottom, edge to edge. Now you don't have to, you could just continue on right from here, flipping over the back sashing strip but I like to bring it over to the iron and just give that back sashing uh, a little press. So we're flipping over that back strip on the back so that it lays nice and flat. So let's bring in our next block. We're going to put back sides together our blocks and match up that raw edge of the sashing strip that we flipped over to our next block. And we're going to sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you'll see I'm just holding these in place. Again, pins, binding clips, glue basting, all of those things might be helpful for you. So now when we open it up, the raw edges come right together underneath of that sashing strip. And that's what the back side is gonna look like. So now we need to finish off the front, right? We have a raw edge on that top sashing strip. A lot of the times I'll just sit right here at the sewing machine and just fold over the raw edge and then fold over that little strip right over top of the seam allowance where we joined block two, right? Joined the next block. But I found that I'm a lot more consistent if I bring it over to the iron and you'll see me using a strip of a uh, poster board or like a cereal box. I cut this strip of thin cardboard a half inch wide and it helps me roll over the raw edge and get a more consistent finish on this top strip and I give that a good press and then bring it over to the iron or over to the sewing machine. <laughs> we were just at the iron. To finish off this strip and to join these two blocks together, I like to go back in and sew on both sides just inside this sashing strip. 
And I like to sew both sides just because it makes it look more consistent. And you might want to use a thread that really blends into that sashing strip so that uh, it's not as noticeable. I'm using a light color thread so that you can maybe see it a little bit better. So for each one of the blocks, you just continue on flipping over that back sashing strip, giving it a press, and then sewing and attaching the next block. Flipping over the raw edge of the top sashing strip, giving that a good little press. You might even want to glue base that down in place if that's helpful for you. And then returning back to the sewing machine and sewing along both sides, just inside that sashing strip. Once you've added all of the blocks in your row, look how super cute this is. Nice little uh, sashing in between our blocks. Isn't that super cute? Once you've joined all of your blocks in your rows, just like this, we're ready to actually join the rows together. So at this point, you'll need two fabrics in between each one of your rows. Just like the blocks, one gets added to the top and one to the back. And you'll sew these strips onto your rows using your quarter inch seam allowance. You'll flip over that back sashing strip and give that a press. And then you're ready to add your next row. Remember to put back sides together. And then we're sewing right on the flat part of the back sashing, joining that row. And to finish it up, you're just turning over the raw edge of that top sashing strip, giving that a press. And then sewing both sides of that longer strip in between your rows. And the really cool thing about Quilt As You Go is once you are at this point, you are done. You're ready to add a binding to your project and call it finished. There's no maneuvering great big quilts trying to get detailed quilting in your blocks with your regular domestic sewing machine. All the quilting is done when you get to this part of joining your blocks. So let's come over and take a preview of the quilt we're going to be starting. There's a daisy block, a cat block. Look how cute that is. A puppy block. There's 16 blocks all together. We're doing a primitive heart block. And a primitive star block. We're going to do one block a week. These will be live videos and free patterns. And you'll find these patterns in the description box of each one of these videos. There's a house block. <laughs> That might be the hardest block of them all. A sewing machine, look at that. A butterfly. A pin cushion. This quilt is going to be called All the Things. So there's all kinds of things that make up this quilt. The quilt will be uh, 20 inches by 20 inches. Featuring raw edge applique. And uh, I'm going to be doing some hand sewing and some machine sewing during this series. Look at that chicken block, y'all. I can hardly wait. That's all the way up at week number 15. <laughs> and an apple block. And down in the description box of this video, you're going to find uh, the information sheet, all the things you need to gather or you might want to gather to start this quilt. I'm going to put this sheet uh, that I'm going to show you down in the description box. I hope this video was helpful for you and we'll see you really soon. Bye everybody.